Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Australia is located in the eastern and southern parts of Indonesia and has an area of 8.945 million square kilometers. The mainstream history of Australia began with European maritime exploration in the continent. The Dutch explorer, Willem Janssoon, was the first known European to reach Australia in 1606. However, by the end of the 18th century, England occupied the continent and turned it into a place for exiling criminals. In the mid-19th century, gold mines were discovered in Australia, which led to immigrants coming to the continent. Since then, they have fought for independence to govern Australia on their own, apart from British control. To this day, Australia is part of the British Commonwealth. That's a summary of the official history of Australia. Now, let's take a look at the photographs taken in the mid-19th century there. The architecture in those pictures is exactly the same as the architecture on other continents. There are only a few people in the pictures because Australia was just discovered and hadn't had a chance to develop cities yet. As the official history I told you just said, in the mid-19th century, gold mines were discovered in Australia, which led to immigrants coming to the continent. However, there's something strange going on here. How is it possible that in a place that was just recently discovered and about to develop, there are already such magnificent buildings, with only a few people there, as seen in the photos? Moreover, these magnificent buildings are exactly the same as the architecture on other continents. I'm a bit puzzled here. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. I have a recommendation of an interesting book to read. The title is, Evolution, Science or Religion? by Dominic Statham. Just from the title, of course you can easily see the contents. So, this book is all about the theory of evolution, and whether it's really based on science, or just another religious belief system. Dominic Statham, the author, takes a close look at the evidence, and gives his opinion on the matter. First things first, let's define what we mean by evolution. It's basically the idea that all living things on Earth, including us humans, have descended from a common ancestor through a process of natural selection and random mutations, over millions of years. Now, a sheeple might be thinking, but wait, isn't evolution backed by solid scientific evidence? Well, that's what we're going to explore in this book. Statham argues that while there is evidence of change over time and adaptation within species, the evidence for the kind of evolution that leads to new kinds of organisms is lacking. He points out that many scientists who believe in evolution often make assumptions about the past that cannot be tested or observed. For example, they assume that mutations can lead to new kinds of organisms, but this has never been observed in the lab or in nature. Statham also points out that the fossil record, which is often cited as evidence for evolution, actually shows evidence of stasis, where many species remain unchanged for millions of years, rather than gradual change over time. He also notes that many complex organisms appear suddenly in the fossil record without any clear evolutionary predecessors, a phenomenon known as the Cambrian explosion. But what about the similarities between different species, you might ask? After all, we do share a lot of DNA with other living things. 
Statham argues that these similarities can just as easily be explained by a common designer, rather than a common ancestor. He also points out that many of the alleged vestigial organs in our bodies, such as the appendix or tailbone, actually have important functions. Now, you might be thinking, but what about all the scientists who believe in evolution? Are they just making things up? Statham acknowledges that many scientists do believe in evolution, but he argues that this is largely due to the influence of philosophical and religious beliefs, rather than purely scientific evidence. He also points out that there are many scientists who are skeptical of evolution, but are often marginalized or ridiculed in the scientific community. So, what does all of this mean for our understanding of the world and our place in it? Statham argues that if evolution is just another religious belief system, then it is ultimately incompatible with Christianity, as well as Islam. He believes that the Bible clearly teaches that God created the world and all the living things in it, and that humans were created in God's image, with a special purpose and dignity. Now, some of you might be thinking, but can't we just believe in both evolution and Christianity? Statham acknowledges that some people try to reconcile the two, but he argues that this ultimately undermines the authority of the Bible and the teachings of Christianity. In the book, according to Dr. Denton, to appreciate the simple cell, we would have to increase it a thousand million times until it would be 20 kilometers in diameter and would not be like a giant balloon capable of covering London or New York. Then we would see an object of unparalleled complexity. We would see the likeness of a colossal automated plant, larger than a city, and performing almost as many unique functions as any production facility organized by man on Earth. And this factory would have one characteristic that none of our most modern machines have. The ability to reproduce its own structure in its entirety, in a matter of hours. Could a system of such complexity have been formed by random processes? In conclusion folks, Evolution Science or Religion is a thought-provoking book that challenges many of the assumptions about evolution that we often take for granted. Whether you agree with Statham or not, it's definitely worth reading if you're interested in the debate over evolution and its implications for our understanding of the world. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.